first an annual general meeting of the CATS Foundation. Um, I won't say much about it because our plan is to have a couple of speakers and we're very fortunate um, to have not only Daniel who uh, with Patricia set up the uh, CATS Foundation uh, about a year ago, it was about 15 months ago and have really uh, done extremely well with raising um, some awareness and publicity and funds. But also we're very fortunate to have uh, one of the world's leading uh, experts on inborn errors and metabolism and lysosomal disorders in uh, Professor Timothy Cox, who's just catching his breath after hot-footing it from Cambridge. He is in fact Professor of Medicine at the University of Cambridge. He's also a consultant physician at Addenbrooke's Hospital and a Fellow of Sydney Sussex College uh, at Cambridge. He's uh, done extensive work and research and published many, many articles um, on inborn errors and metabolism and uh, lysosomal disorders, of which Tay-Sachs which our, our children or grandchildren suffer from is, is one of those diseases. Um, he's also, uh, and I'm in awe of this, a co-author of the Oxford Textbook of Medicine. For those of you not in the medical world, this is our standard textbook. It's the book that every medical student has under, under his pillow. We also uh, are very fortunate in having Katrina Sarig, who's uh, one of the executive uh, directors of the Jewish Genetic Disorders, of which there's a very close link with uh, study and understanding of the genetics of Tay-Sachs uh, disease. Um, and she'll be able to maybe afterwards during the Q&A answer some questions for you um, about um, screening and so on that we might like to touch on. And we're also fortunate in that we have a, a couple of other patrons. We have um, Julia Ogilvie, who's one of our patrons and supporters as well, sitting there, for which we're indebted. It's a pleasure. Um, without much ado, I'm going to hand over to Daniel while Professor Cox tries to figure out what he's going to say. <laughs> and he'll tell you all about the, uh, the charity and what, what they've achieved. Hearing your name, hearing your name. So I just want to say thank you everyone for coming down today. It's exciting for us. It's been 15 months since we started the Cats Foundation and we've grown at a rate faster than we thought was possible. So today, I wanted to talk to you basically about us and the charity and why we, why we started it, how we help people affected by tay sachs our progress in the last 15 months, uh, the fundraising activities we've undertaken, and then the future for the charity and the direction we want to go. Hearing your name, hearing your name. So, who is the Cats Foundation? Why was the charity started? Basically, when our daughter, Emily, was diagnosed back um, in March 2011, like James and Deborah at the same time, we searched on the internet to try and find out a support network in the UK. There wasn't really anything specific for case acts that was crime. It was a, gen a gen kind of generic metabolic uh, disorder charity, but nothing really that focused on case acts. We wanted that support network and that up-to-date information. So we uh, searched for information, and I only found the NTSAD in the US, which is a great charity, but really focuses on, on children affected by the disease there. There's nothing in the UK. So uh, had, we had a meeting with Professor Cox, with James, Deborah. We decided that we should start a taste act specific charities for how the Cats Foundation started. And um, having set the charity up, we had to set certain objectives. That's kind of a legal requirement. So our objectives are quite clear. We support the research for public benefit into the disease. Provision of a support network. Finally, we purchase equipment not available on the NHS. We're fortunate with the NHS that a lot of things that the children require is provided. But there are some add-ons that, that is either seen, I hate to say the word luxury, but sometimes they won't supply a pram cover, that sort of thing. It's where the charity can step in. Plus, if you're not happy, people aren't happy with the, the kind of seating option given to them by their OT, that's where we can, we can step in and provide that, that piece of kit that you may want. So our aims are quite clear. We want to raise awareness of TASACs to the wider community. We want to provide an online resource centre and undertake fundraising activities. So for a charity, you have to have a board of trustees. Okay? We have five trustees. And all the trustees, their role was to ensure we always meet our charity objectives. So if we go off book a bit on what we want to do, they're the ones who rein us in and say, this isn't appropriate, you know, or you're planning on spending too much money there. They're involved in all the funding decisions. So 
And you might, as you should know, that all the money that's raised it isn't just gone and spent on things we think people want. We have a proper meeting, sit down and discuss what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate. So, who are the trustees? It's myself. It's Patricia. He's very good at organising everything. She kind of gets most things done for us. It's uh, my sister Kate. She actually works in the charity environment at the moment. And she also has a legal background. So she helps us a lot in the legal documents we may need to prepare. We then have Dan at the back as a trustee. He works in audit, so he has a very good analytical mind. And then Lauren, unfortunately can't make it today, but he works in the financial service industry and he's very good with numbers and helps us with uh, accounting. So. And our timeline highlights for the charity itself. June 2011 was when we had the initial meeting with James, Deborah, Patricia, Prof Cox and his team. It was there that we decided that there was space for a taste act specific charity. It was just a case of, of starting it. So, June 2011, we received our first donation. Quite simply, just set up a PayPal account and people started donating. And then we uh, launched the website in July 2011 with the help of Steve at the back there. He's done a lot of the IT with me, kind of uh, establishing an online presence. In September 2011, the first family we helped with the child affected by Tay Sachs. And in October 2011, we had already hit the £10,000 mark in money received. In November 2011, we got our Charity Commission registration, which is quite a long process of, of legal documents we had to prepare. And in June 2012, we made our first donation to Prof, Prof Cox's team. And in August 2012, we uh, hit 50,000. Hearing your name, hearing your name. How we help? Most of you have, have received some sort of help from the charity itself. It's quite a simple process. If you want something, you just speak to us. Or we may suggest something. <coughs> you will get back to us with a yes or a no. If there's something you want, we then just go on to our trustees. It, you usually get the approval of the costs within a day. And then from there, the equipment's obtained and it takes about a month. That's our simple process on how we all help people. Okay. The equipment we've provided so far. We've provided swings, there's a banner. We've provided alternative seating with a tumble form chair that a few of them got. The car seats. And uh, the sensory tools. It's really good. We've also provided pram accessories and accessories at home. Hearing your name, hearing your name. Our progress. This is the exciting bit. Since we started, we've raised £95,000, which, you know, is a huge effort. Um, and today I've actually received a few more checks and I think we've just hit over 100,000, which is, for 15 months is a, a huge target for us, it's amazing. Our outgoing is at 32,000, and I'll explain why the number is so much, appears so much lower than the, outcome, than the incoming. So in year one, year two, you'll see our incoming <coughs> was 34,000, and our years run from July to June. And then from since uh, 1st of July 2012 till today, we've raised 60,000. So there's been, I think we're saying, about 75% increase in the last kind of, three to four months in our funding compared to last year. Which has shown that the going out there, raising awareness, getting our name out to people to undertake fundraising, uh, fundraising activities for us is working. Now our outgoing appears small compared to our incoming. That's because when we set up the charity, we have to state how we go about our funding. So we initially said, we will, year one and two will be combined in our funding. We will try and um, uh, kind of spend what we've made in year one. So we're going to hit the £30,000 mark at the moment, <coughs> maybe a bit more by the end of the year. That then leaves us on target to work out our future spending for the next, the following years based on what we've earned. So let's kind of have a, we're working things out. And this is our expenditure so far. So there's admin costs, there's events. Event costs are absorbed, are then we get back from the event itself. Uh, family help, merchandise, and the research donation. So this is where the money's gone. A lot of it's gone on to the sensory toys, alternate seating. This is, now this will increase by next year and year. Our plan is to help as often as much as we can. There'll be, 
we initially set a limit on how much and how often, but now we do it on a case by case basis. So if you need something, you just contact us. Hearing your name, hearing your name. Our progress in the media has been really good. We've had some good um, exposure. We've appeared across multiple media outlets. It's a range from local and national press. We've appeared in newspapers, magazines, on TV and also online. So, some of our press appearances. The Evening Standard, which uh, kind of promoted the charity and what our fundraising aims were. And there's uh, a small little article. In March 2012 we appeared on Sky Sports. We were introduced, uh, Danny and I ran a marathon and finished at Wembley. If we saw the clip, we introduced 80,000 people, which is really good. And in uh, April, we appeared on the BBC News, which is good. And in Runners World magazine recently, the Cats 10K Challenge I'll talk about later on was reviewed. We've had a uh, really good uptake of people signing up for that challenge since the article was published. So other press appearances include the Berry Free Press, uh, Jewish Chronicle, Saracen's website, you know, the South End Echo, Essex Chronicle. And there's also been hearing your name, hearing your name. So our fundraising activities. I've done other highlights of some of the things we've done. So in July 2011, this was the very first fundraising event for the charity. It's three of us, we raised about 150 pounds. You know, it's the first thing we did. And then this is our first mass participation event. We had about uh, 30 runners just running a 5k race, which was brilliant. We did a charity football game which James Kendall played yeah. in as well. It's the first time we raised over £1,000 for one individual event. And that was the first event outside London, the Halloween party. The St David's Day run. It was the first event outside England, which was <laughs> significant. <laughs> and then uh, the Billericay run is something my brother and I are going to try and uh, hold annually. Just people in the local area just can run a variety of distances and just kind of pay £25 to take part. Three Peaks Challenge is quite a popular challenge that people want to take. These guys did it for us. Um, and this was uh, one of the talks I've given to the schools, Martin Gale Primary School, I've been in a couple of times. And uh, they've actually taken part in a season's greetings card competition where I've asked all the children to come up with a design for a Christmas card, which I've got at home, chosen the winner, and I go in next week to announce that. And then we were getting those printed. And then hopefully everyone here will buy them and send us a Christmas card. Uh, Liverpool Marathon, there were uh, about seven of us who ran that. And then this was our big first annual golf and dinner dance, which my brother and my, my dad put on. We raised over 15,000, which is great. And then some other events we held that people, uh, people have taken part in. Some more. There's uh, Emily's Nursery Zoom, I've done quite a lot of fundraising for us. And the uh, charity football game again. Uh, and then this, um, the quiz. So here's the Cats 10K challenge. The plan here, it's been going since July, is we're getting someone different to run 10K for us every single day. It's worked constantly. It's uh, been a huge success. So if you want to take part, just sign up. expand our funding to families. At the moment we were kind of limited on the amount we had we could spend but the increase in the funding recently allowed us to, to expand that. We want to offer respite holidays. One of the uh, ob objectives we, s we set at the beginning was that we would offer respite holidays but at the time we didn't have enough money to be able to go and offer that to people. We have a trustee meeting planned in December where this will be discussed in greater depth but the idea is we will probably either have a set amount or a location where we will offer you the families to go away, just to get a, just to have a break. So we know how difficult it is, you know, to get away. The one will help with that. We also want to offer respite care at home, and how that or what you want, people just come to us with suggestions. If you want someone to come once a week or once a month to help out at home, you just tell us, and we can explore how how we can go with that funding. I think it's important. Having been affected by the disease as well, is that 
um, having like a care plan for parents. I think that's something that needs to be explored that we're all also looked after and helped because it's a difficult time obviously for the children. We also need to be able to get our space. And then uh, provide funding for end of life costs. Patricia's mentioned this to a few of you. This is something we, we're going to help out with. The amount, again, when we have the trustee meeting, we'll discuss. But the idea here is that the majority of that's taken care of, so you don't have to worry about that. So, another thing we want to do is increase the community awareness. So, more presentations on TASACs and the charity going out to schools. Um, fundraise within our community and your community and as many communities so they're aware of just the disease and the charity. And it raises awareness of tax acts. So at the moment we have certain school nursery part schools and nursery partners. So we have Nightingale Primary School, who I've been in a few times. And the children have been involved in the charity. The Zoom nursery have done lots of fundraising for us. And then Trinity School in Lee, which are John's here is the deputy head, which I'm uh, Looking forward to this, they're doing a carol concert in December. The plan is for me to also go into the school and give a talk. And then uh, we're going to explore some more fundraising opportunities with them and more awareness raising uh, in the future, in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Continuing awareness, we're going to explore some corporate sponsorship. That's something we, we, hopefully we can obtain. Arrange more fundraising activities and keep everyone up to date with as much information as possible about the research that's being undertaken, about the fundraising that's happening, and then if you have a question, come to us and we'll try and find that, the answer you need. That's the plan. Thank you. And that's it. <laughs>